We're live. Hi, everybody. Um, right. Got to give this go. Um, my name is Edith Bowman. How are you? It's very nice to be here with you. Um, I have a podcast, which is called Soundtracking with Edith Bowman. And every week, we um, provide you with a brand new episode with someone from the world of film and TV, where they talk about their relationship with music, both professionally, but also personally. And we are three years in, and we absolutely love making the podcast. It's myself and my friend Ben, and yeah, we love doing it. Our latest episode is up now with um, Alan Silvestri, the legendary composer, more on that later. But this YouTube channel is kind of an extension of that podcast. And so we've put up quite a few videos over the last couple of weeks, not loads, but we've just kind of peppered the channel with some great stuff that is, I guess, additional content to what we have on the podcast. So we've got um, a great chat with um, some of the guys from Booksmart, Olivia Wilde and Beanie and Caitlin, who starred in Booksmart because we love the film and we wanted to shout about it. They weren't all quite right to feature in the podcast, but we wanted to do stuff with them. So we thought, let's film it and we can make a little package and put it up on YouTube. And that's what we've done. So that's up there. We also have um, a, a wonderful little chat with Aaron Taylor Johnson and Sam Taylor Johnson talking about their new film, A Million Little Pieces, which is out now in cinemas. I knew really should check it out. I'll talk about that more in a second. We also have uh, Werner Herzog, who I was lucky enough to uh, be asked to host an In Conversation with at the Sheffield Doc Fest. And I was absolutely terrified to sit and talk to him because um, he's a bit of a legend. But I did. I went up to Sheffield, did my prep, did my research, went up there and I'm really happy with how it went. So you can check that out as well. And then I hosted the UK premiere of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And uh, we've put a little video of my chat with Margot Robbie, Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt all together. Uh, and it was one of those kind of moments where no one really knew until it happened as to how we were going to get them. Were we going to get them on their own? Were we going to get them as a pair and then a single? And then at the last minute, it was kind of like, OK, here you go. You can have them all now together. So, yeah, we had all three of them up there. And yeah, it was a bit scary and daunting, but they were on great form and it's a great film. Um, and you can also hear Quentin on the podcast as well. So please do check that out. Um, but... What I thought I would do, I put up it on social media on our Insta stories this week and was asking you guys whether you thought it might be a nice idea every week to pop up and just talk about, just pick a couple of films that we're really excited about or we think are worth checking out rather than giving you guys reviews of the latest films that are out and just either being positive or negative about things. What's the point in wasting your energy on negative stuff? So what I thought I'd do is just pick out a couple of films that we think are worth checking out and talk about them. And then hopefully you can make up your own mind whether you go and see them or not. So I mentioned A Million Little Pieces, it came out last week and it is Sam and Aaron's adaptation of the James Fry book, A Million Little Pieces. So they've adapted the script themselves and Sam's directed it, Aaron's in it. And I think it's quite extraordinary actually what they've done considering the budget that they had and the fact that they shot it in 20 days. It's an amazing thing that they've achieved. Um, and you can just tell that the book really made a connection with them in the way that Aaron portrays his character and Sam's directed the film. It also features, I think, some pretty spellbinding performances from the likes of Billy Bob Thornton as Leonard, uh, Juliette Lewis, Giovanni Rubisi, and Charlie Hunnam, who's not in it very much, but plays um, Bob Fry, James's brother. And just great chemistry, I think. So... I think they've done a great job. The score is fantastic, done by uh, Atticus Ross, uh, who's also worked with Trent Reznor. And there's some great needle drops in there as well. And you can check out the video on this channel with um, Aaron and Sam, or you can listen to the podcast with the two of them, where we play a lot of the music that features in the film, both score and um, needle drops as well. So A Million Little Pieces is well worth seeing. Go seek it out, support small independent film um, and just, yeah, try and see it because I think it's well worth seeing. For me, it was the film that I saw in my head when I read the book. So there you go. 
Uh, it Chapter 2 came out in cinemas yesterday and we have got Andy Machete coming up on the podcast this coming Friday. So the 13th of September, I think it is. Now, I'm not a horror fan and I'm not an expert on the genre at all. It's not a genre of filmmaking that I would choose to go and see, but I really enjoyed this. And in prep for it, because I knew I was going to be chatting to Andy, I rewatched the first film. And it kind of reminded me of what a kind of fun ride it is, because it's not straight horror. It's clever. Obviously, it's Stephen King, so it's going to be. But what I love about the way that Andy and his team have chosen to adapt this one book into two films is that the first film is just the kids. Whereas in the book, it's the, it kind of flits between the two sort of time frames, you know, the kids and then 27 years later. But they made the decision for it just to be about the kids in the first film, which I think was really, really clever. And Pennywise, just oh, amazing. So terrifying, so creepy, so brilliant. And in the second film, it's the adult versions of the kids. The casting for those, by the way, is perfection. It's so brilliant. But what you also get as well as the adult versions is the kid version, so it flits between the two. And what's really clever and what the second film really does is obviously these kids went through this incredibly traumatic experience. And because of that, it's messed with their memories and the way that trauma can almost create memories in a different reality. And so they address that in the second part. And I think very cleverly. Um, there's lots of... Um, there's lots of things that are different about the second film as well, even Pennywise, little tiny nuances that I think that they've just kind of treated with them, excuse me, <coughs> a lot of respect, but I just think it's clever. It's kind of bigger, it's more bombastic, it's more uh, gregarious, I guess, is the word that I'd use to describe it. So I really liked it. Again, a brilliant score. Benjamin Walfish is back doing the score for it. He did a great job with the first. There'll be things you recognise in the second film as well that featured in the first. A lot of great needle drops as well. Not as many as the first film, but still quite a lot of them as well, which is great. So that's all good. Um, so yeah, it chapter two. Just go along for the ride. Yet yeah, scary, but it's not kind of... It's kind of fun scary. It's heart scary it's kind of yeah it's 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 really hard to describe because it's a different type of horror film but i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it um what about on the old streaming services and home ends and dvd stuff uh, out on monday the 9th of september is brian welsh's beats great little film uh which is an adaptation of uh, uh it's based on a play by Kieran Hurley, who also worked on the script um, with uh, Brian, and it's set in 1994 in Scotland, proper in the kind of uh, time of illegal raves. These two young teenage lads who are best friends, who can't come from the same sort of area, but have very different home environments. It's not different backgrounds because they do kind of come from the same kind of area but their their environments at home are very very different which gives the expectation on their paths and their future different focus so this whole story focuses on these two kids who are being kind of drawn in different directions uh, but they're sort of also drawn towards the idea of attending this illegal rave and having the best night of their life and I loved it I think the music in it is great I think Brian has directed an extraordinary film, gotten some great performances out of not just the leads, but the supporting cast around it. And a really beautiful snapshot of the heart of that time and culture. So seek out beats if you can. <coughs> um, another thing, <coughs> excuse me, that I, hold on one second. <coughs> <coughs> Wow. Um, another thing that I'm going to go and watch right now is, as soon as I finish this, is Peanut Butter Falcon, which is coming out on the 18th of October. I've heard such great things about this little film. Shia LaBeouf and Dakota Johnson. So I'm going to go and watch that. And maybe I'll report back uh, and tell you some more. If you like this, um, it's dead easy for me to do. I can maybe make it a bit... Uh, 
a bit more all singing and dancing by playing some clips and stuff like that. But to start off with, I just wanted to give this a go, see what you thought about it. So feel free to give me some comments about what you think. Um, also, if you've seen any of the films or you want to see any of the films or what you thought about them, please leave comments and let me know. Subscribe to the channel. We'll try and keep kind of feeding you some really interesting content that we can get over the next little while. And in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to the podcast because we're very proud of it and we love what we do. And we put it up every Friday. There's a new episode every week. Um, as I said, we've got Alan Silvestri this week. It's available now. Legendary composer who has this wonderful, long-standing career uh, and relationship with Robert Zemeckis. So, I mean, he's done everything from Romance in the Stone, Back to the Future, Forrest Gump, Welcome to Marwin Polar Express, Cast Away, you name it. Chips as well. Uh, he is a wonderful man who tells great stories. Uh, and we only scratched the surface on this episode with him because I very much feel like we can maybe do three or four chapters with him. So go and check that out. And coming up this Friday, we have, as I said, Andy Machetti, director and co-writer of <clears throat> It Chapter Two coming up. See you then.